Hello, hello, listeners. You're <laughs> tuned in to Manhood Mindset on 91.9 The Buzz, located in Statesboro, Georgia. We're WVGS 91.9 The Buzz. And once again, I'm Dale from Riverdale. And this is Big Chris from Ellenwood, Georgia, man. Thank y'all so much for joining us again. I hope y'all liked our last show. We got a lot of buzz. We got a lot of uh, interest in the show. We have a lot of feedback from the show, man. We got a lot of input, too, man. Uh, we also have a special guest in the house this evening, and we're going to take this time out to allow him to introduce himself. Take it away. Go right on ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm uh, Mike Baugh from uh, South Beach, bringing that South Beach vibe that I always bring. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, South Beach. everywhere I go, uh, I, I am an... <laughs> Uh, I am uh, an educator uh, uh, on race and diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, I have several interests, uh, uh, and um, politics is one of them. Um, and I'm just here to enjoy the show uh, with Dale and Big Chris, and uh, that's about it. That's what's up, man. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. We're going to have a really, really good conversation today. Uh, the goal of this show, man, is pretty much to uh, address anything that could affect our mindset. All right. In a positive or a negative way. You know what I mean? We it's just we're just out here just to talk um, with the people, but not for the people. Um, and, and a lot of people feel that they may be going through some things and they're not sure how to handle them. So mm -hmm. hopefully if we show them or tell them how we handle certain things or how we witness other people handle their situations, they can help themselves. All right. So, so tell me something good. Exactly, man. So, Dale, man, let's check in with the people, man. How's, how's your week been going? Anything you've been seeing lately? Anything that's ran across your mind? Ooh. What's up? My week has actually been crazy because I just got my books. They okay. just came in Monday, and all my teachers are kind of like, yeah, financial aid messed up a lot of y'all, but we really don't care. <laughs> oh, man, that's tough. Um, Oh, yeah. you still your, your exam is still Friday. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah, but you know what? Um, I will move you back in the discussion group, but yeah, that's just for that one chapter, but I am going to hold you accountable for all the other 10 chapters that there is no way in the world that you could have read. So that's awesome. But other than that, um, <laughs> that's tough. That's awesome. I mean, Hey, and I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's extremely I, uncomfortable. I'm going to be like a trucker tonight. I'm going to have like five, five hour energies, two no dos, three monsters, and a Kit Kat bar trying to figure out. <laughs> that's sugar from hell. <laughs> trying to figure out. <laughs> trying to figure yeah. out how I'm going to do this. If you're going to be in the library, man, please do not levitate in front of the camera. They will call the police on you, dude. <laughs> so you're like, there, there's a, uh, uh, a black man glowing in the dark uh, talking about you going to get these chapters. I don't know what, what you going to get these chapters. Hey. I'm going to be reading so many chapters in one night. I'm going to walk into the library and books just going to start levitating, man. Towards you. I'm going to be like Magneto with a magnifying glass. Yeah, a MacBook roll. MacBook roll. <laughs> MacBook worm. MacBook word. That's MacBook what's up. worm. But other than that, man, it's been great. My son's been doing great. That's um, beautiful, man. Beautiful. He got plenty of everything that he need, including love. That's good. That's so good. other than that, I mean, that's that's why we starting off late today. It's my fault. I'm going to go ahead and take, take the client. I had to give him a bath and stuff while I came Man, in. that's bad. But other bro. than that... Yeah. That be hey, hey what, what did King Joffrey Joffrey say it uh come to it? Let them wait. <laughs> Let them wait. I'm talking to my son. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's how you, like, you know I'm gonna get you the satchel made out of a lion head. <laughs> you just walk in there. Let them wait. My son needed a bath. <laughs> Move those peasants. No, right. It's so funny, man. This is going to be the last thing. When I bathe him, he got a Winnie the Pooh bathtub. Hilarious. So I walk around like Leonidas from 300. That's funny. And I'll be like, this is the kingdom <laughs> of Arnold. And you have just been bathed in the royal waters of Pooh. <laughs> Well, I'm of poo. I don't know why. Man. Like, you've been dipped in the honeys and the oils. That's when I put the lavender and stuff on him mm. after he done got the bath. After you've been bathed in the warrior waters of poo. And he just loves it. He just, he'll just he sit there and if you if he looks like a prince on the throne, he'll be like, yes, my dad said. <laughs> he he intimidating all the non-imaginable people in the yeah. room. Like, he, just, he just punking all the toys. He was like, yeah, my dad said I'm number one. <laughs> number one. How, how old is he again? He's five months. Just chilling. He already got twenty one year old facial expression. He sure does. Yes. <laughs> he's a he's a very well to do judgmental baby. He will judge you. Yeah. <laughs> he but he's so chill, it. he's the easiest baby. He really is. <laughs> we is took cool. him to a party one time and um he was in there 
grabbing more boobs than his dad was. And That's I was tight and like, funny. That's mm. just hilarious. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do it while you can get away with it, son. Exactly, man. It's it cute so now, funny. and then all of a sudden you have paperwork to fill out. All right. <laughs> 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, actually, man, this week has been pretty uh, funny, I would say. Uh, I actually saw some stuff uh, on Facebook. There was a teacher in Atlanta Public School uh, that was reprimanded for having uh, inappropriate wear, uh, inappropriate uh, attire. Yeah, the dress. Let's talk about that. Yeah, and the That's dress. The, okay. Please, let's talk about Oh, my that. gosh, man. And uh, the comments, you got to understand, Facebook. I didn't is, see the comments. Oh, it's, I mean, I saw the article. But. Oh, man, it's just funny. But she has been reprimanded, if I'm not mistaken. She has yeah. been met with discipline and all of her social media pages. I'm not sure if they're off or down, but some things have been deleted from what I've been told. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my homeboys from uh, back home in Ellawood, they are crushed because they have... <laughs> <laughs> because, because they have single-handedly increased her friend counts on Facebook and Instagram. All right, man. But no, honestly, it's been a really, really uh, interesting conversation about body type, and um, and a lot of people are saying, you know, well, if she wasn't, um, if if she was of another race, or they're they're uh, stigmatizing her and ostracizing her oh, and isolating her because of her curves. You know what I mean? A lot of people are looking at her clothes and her clothes. You know, some people are like, well, you know, that's inappropriate. I don't want a distraction to my children, but no one asks the children. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so sometimes people will uh, will blame how they feel on I don't want my kid around that. No, you don't want your husband around that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, you want to go to the parent-teacher meeting. Exactly. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> now, all of a sudden. And there, may, and there may be feelings within you that and, you are trying to. Exactly. And I would say, I was saying, why don't her, they let her be great? I bet the father involvement will skyrocket. <laughs> <laughs> Just, volunteering yeah just people uncles would be like yeah I got a nephew to go in, 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 in your class so I just want to be more involved um, I, I, and you like Ryan <laughs> but no nah, well I we mean, in school so this is the well -trained. exactly man but, but it's I, of course there are a lot more serious issues when it comes to that about the body image of African American uh, and the, women the, in this country how they are perceived as inappropriate just for having their specific body type so it was a lot of people having a lot of heated discussions about it uh, a lot of people felt all different types of ways. We had uh, I saw some teachers comment and say, you know what, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, and I, I think it's inappropriate the stuff she's wearing. Then you had other educators who were like, well, she's been awarded uh, several awards about being a great teacher. I think she was like recently like teacher of the month or something. Uh, and they were just like, well, if it's not if it's not distracting the children, who is it really distracting? You know what I mean? So it was it was different. It was different. Um, uh, statements running all over the place about her attire and what's appropriate for her. I, I could see, uh, if I may interject, I could I could see the argument where uh, she knows what she's doing. Yep. You know, because <laughs> in truth, you know, a, a lot of women they, they 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 do put on on clothing and they say, oh, this is this is oh, this is nothing. I just I just put this on. <laughs> just you know, I didn't know it was all this. You know, you know what I mean? You knew exactly uh, for the most part. You knew exactly what what. Uh, all, you know, <laughs> you knew it, but at the same time, uh, I think uh, more important than that, uh, uh, we have to talk about, and you you allude to this, the, the black body as being s sexualized yeah. consistently. Yeah. Um. Uh. The uh, you know the black male genital organs and and the black fe female reproductive organs. Right. Um. Uh, both are reproductive, but um. Uh. Being se highly sexualized mm -hmm. and uh, as seen as a sin, the black body is always uh uh. uh sinning in some way exactly in um, and, 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 and also she's a victim uh, as uh, Du Bois would uh, would argue uh, about uh, the great Jack Johnson um, uh, this unforgivable blackness yeah um, and so Speak she's also that. a victim of this unforgivable blackness mm. uh, and also this unforgivable uh, femaleness that's not her, you know that she uh, is a part of in a patriarchal culture uh oh so we have to talk about the intersectionality uh -oh. uh, of oppression ladies and gentlemen um, so y'all better tell uh, somebody to log on <laughs> real quick it's gonna get deep in here today it really is, um, it really is good, bro. but but we have to we have to have these serious conversations about black sexualized bodies and we are all uh in this culture always in this preventative case this defensive case of we have to defend ourselves against the black body exactly. as a defender and remember that governor uh the governor of maine who, who was uh uh more recently uh discussing uh black males coming into the state name yeah. name yeah. name cash money 
money and stuff like that. Yeah. You just made up these names mm -hmm. who come in and impregnate, yeah, um, impregnate people, impregnate our, our, our white blonde women and run out mm -hmm. and then leave the state with and leave them with a child. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 this constant fear uh, 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 of Blacks. delinquency and all all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, go back to the teacher. She is a uh, part of it. black black women often uh, embrace their curves and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I I do get the argument that she in a sense would know what she's doing but this is more so uh on on the parent uh and, and student board uh and not the board uh the, the uh, school board the school boards and mm -hmm. things of that nature more so really the parents causing an uproar uh, uh about the body who was always has always committed to sin just by existing mm -hmm. um and so existing within a certain social space is, is problematic for the black body exactly. so what social space is she within from a sociological perspective right, right. um because we, we exist in different spaces and if we enter the wrong space if the black and brown body may enter the wrong space uh that will be seen as problematic and dangerous um, and uh and dangerous for that black body um because they are then putting everyone else in danger mm. somehow um so anyway no yeah. that's good that's really good i mean no, but a lot ahead. of people a lot of people just really need to understand there's so many different factors that weigh in it's more than just her clothes it is more than just her clothes, man. I mean, it's it's how she's treated. It's how it's it's, it's so many different things that's going on in there. We just don't know. Go I ahead. feel like let's let's attack it from the surface of what they say is the issue, right. and then go all the way deep into it. Okay. Okay. I I examine her clothes, and what I've noticed because most of my friends are female, and what I've noticed that it's really more so the female population is tearing her apart. I've witnessed yep, that. I it's, the, that. it's the female population is tearing her apart. Mm -hmm. I'm from Clayton County. Enjoy. My, <laughs> I'm from Clayton County. <laughs> Where's that? South Atlanta. South oh. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Okay. What she wore in that classroom, I have seen since the beginning of my education. Right. So right. it's not, I'm talking about ugly women, beautiful women, curves, she flat, she's still wearing that. Like <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I'm for real. So it's just like, <laughs> my thing is, there's nothing about, because her clothes had a sleekness mm -hmm. to it now. See, the, 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 the so-called inappropriate images that they grasped of her, mm -hmm. they grasped of her of a setting outside of school. Mm -hmm. Like she is not a person outside of exactly. that place. That exactly. That was that was my first issue. It was issue. the one from the beach, I believe. Yeah, the one from the beach. And that's the time about how she's, she's supposed to be in that at the beach. <laughs> exactly. That's appropriate setting for that to be at the beach. But what trust me, what, I want to see it at the beach. What <laughs> It's not my type, but I, I guess you know what narratives what what narratives are being written. Right. Um, well, they're saying that oh well, one of my and I'm not gonna say, but one of my one of my ladies' friends was like saying, hey, you know, when I was doing my my internship mm -hmm. or whatever school, they said that we could only dress a certain way and we had to be professional. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, define professional. There we go. Definitions. I she was like, well, professional. <laughs> It's something that is is more. She was like, it's 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 not that. It's something that's more safe or traditional. I said, define traditional. traditional. <laughs> she said, well, traditional is something that you know that can be accepted, accepted in multiple 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 settings. I said, okay, upon whose acceptance? Well, the people. Who are, Who are the, the people? people? See, th this is this is my situation. Now I want to take it all the way back because this is this is a hot topic for me, right? For sure, for now sure. remember back about about ten years ago when well you were still kind of you were still in the upper levels of school sure. and like you know high school and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But they are pushing about African Americans being teachers. Being going into the professions that help people. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my thing: you can't bring a younger generation into an area of expertise without them bringing a younger culture to the area mm -hmm. of expertise. Okay, we are. This is a new generation, and some people may argue with this. But first of all, she didn't do anything inappropriate. Mm -hmm. But this is a newer generation. She's not gonna be in there with knee high stockings and a dress with a slip on mm -hmm. like grandma used to be back in the day when she was teaching the school. It's mm -hmm. a whole different trend. But at the same time. 
time, if you go back, because they say back in the day, those same elderly people didn't they, they upset the their boat. parents, uh, uh, and they set, upset the previous they generation. Upset right. their, the previous generation is what they got going on. Mm-hmm. So let's not let's not forget the fact that each generation redefines what is acceptable as you're going on. Yep. Okay, that's one thing that I wanted to hit at. The second thing I wanted to hit at is and the selective memory of of, uh, of oh yeah each generation. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the selective memory. Yeah. So let's look at it like this here. Okay, she's in every time she was in there, okay, she wore jeans that were form fitting. She wore um a shirt that was form fitting. Now if she was in there slouchy, they'd have something to say. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the thing about it is, okay, because she wore something that accented her body nice, that does not mean that it was unprofessional. Mm-hmm. Unprofessional is you got to pull your skirt down every time you help uh, Leroy with a math problem because Je- uh, Jeff behind you going to see all your goodies. That's inappropriate. Mm-hmm. It's inappropriate if you're leaning over and your boobs are about to f- fall out. But my thing is she was covered from head to yeah, toe. Yeah, she really was. Covered from I head to toe. It. Even her skirt that was formed. Oh, I look I mean, as well. Just for scientific purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I look as well. Her um the dress that they said that was Below inappropriate. To me. It was it was just about to the point where she, it was she, she didn't have that Miami flavor for me, but that but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? Um I mean you you probably like the girls that be in the pit bull, bull videos that be helping him count. <laughs> the they be helping him count. Uno, dos, that they be they be helping him. <laughs> They be helping him. That's wow. the girl, girl, girl. You're like, that's cool though. <laughs> to each man, each man is his own. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know how to count. I, I know how to count in Spanish just because of that. Baby I'll never forget count. all the way up to five. Wow. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, the fact is, they demonized her. That. It was an insecurity. Like I was sitting there listening to uh, someone. Basically. They're treating her this way because it's an insecurity that really, to be honest with you, is probably a few mothers at the school Mm -hmm. who either was losing their man (laughs) or about to lose their man or was in a co-parenting situation. (laughs) And it was difficult to watch their significant other or want to be significant other being like, oh, yeah, I went to um, I went to Tim's school today and I talked to his teacher. What you talking to her for? Yep. (laughs) And that's exactly where it started. Because what I've noticed in this society that this really, to be honest with you, women define that standard of what is acceptable when it comes to women. At mm. the end of the day, if women said, you will not treat us like that, and women stood together as a front and said, this is not going to happen anymore. If all the women got together tomorrow and said, look, we're not going to ever date a man that has curly hair. Perm sales would increase like yesterday <laughs> they set the standard for what is okay mm. and uh, the harshest and the and, harshest, and, and yeah. men would do it because they don't want to lose certain they don't want, yeah. uh, benefits mm-hmm. uh 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 if, i mean they, they might consider benefits mm-hmm. uh, yeah. uh uh but uh hey, benefits <laughs> beneficiary beneficiary and i'm not talking about death but anyway <laughs> What I'm saying is, what the point that I'm trying to get at, and I'm sorry for beating around the bush, is the fact that it's really the women who are destroying this woman. Mm. Because we like, did she touch Timmy? Did she touch Rachel? Did did she not teach? Okay, her students got this grades in the class? She good. I'm I'm just throwing this out there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, I I believe that the the responsibility lies... um, mainly in women to deal with women issues and uh, exactly. uh, I don't want to be a, a man and insert my patriarchy and say this is what you should be doing but at the same time do men have a role in stepping up and standing up for certain issues and supporting oh most we definitely. should um, oh and most I'm definitely doing it now most definitely most definitely I think um, <clears throat> when it comes to <clears throat> and also by the way do women um, and how often does a man or woman dislike another man or woman because they exert certain qualities that I may find extremely attractive in our culture, and mm-hmm. I don't have those things. Exactly. Yeah, right. um, yeah. But, really, but, but you know I'll, what's I'll funny? Look. I think in all human situations, like gender does play a role in anything that we do. If you identify with having a gender, gender does play a role in something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? However, I, I I always look at the human. I try to at least look at the human aspect of every situation. <clears throat> Humans have a tendency. If 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 it's they see someone who possesses something that they are they don't possess and they see value in that and they don't see them actually um, one day achieving that value, there could be a level of jealousy. 
All right, that's just could. human. There could be. I don't. I don't want to assume. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because some, sometimes you'll see somebody doing better, and you're happy for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. But sometimes when you see someone, they may be even getting attention. They may even got uh, a raise. They mm-hmm. they might have got something that you might have put some some value to, mm-hmm. and then something inside either says, "Hey, I want that for myself," or some people may say, "Well, why does that person have that?" All right, it's it must be something mm-hmm. that they're, they're not doing what makes right. You so special, right? What makes you so special? So the human side of it, someone, and honestly, I ain't gonna lie to you, it doesn't have to be. Uh, a female. Don't get me wrong. That's what I saw on social media. Yeah, that's However, we don't know what happened behind closed doors. It could have been a, a male supervisor that said, you know what? I ain't got time. You ruining my household. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my wife called me looking at you. I'm having a hard time at the house. We need to we need to set something straight. We just don't know. I'm throwing it out there as a possibility, not as a fact. Uh, probably, right? probably 2% chance. Yeah. Right, right, well, right. I had this question while you on that. What's up? At first, didn't, it, didn't the meme start as her just being... An, attra- about, an attractive, uh, the most attractive school. teacher in uh, what APS? In a, yeah, in Atlanta public in schools. Atlanta public schools, right? So, so it, at first it was a positive. It thing. was a positive thing, and it was in a paper, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not I think, sure. I'm that. not sure. I just saw it all on my Facebook. But for her to get that attention, now I'll put like this: you know, for wallpaper it, for it for it to yeah for wallpaper. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, for it to have mm. all that attention. Now I ain't gonna lie to you. When I saw that, the most attractive female in. Uh, the ma- most attractive teacher, or is it most attractive female teacher? It must have been overall yeah. teacher. Yeah, most overall, most attractive teacher APS. When I saw that, I was like, somebody gonna be mad. I said, oh so, yeah. I said somebody gonna be mad. And some somebody I can already tell. It could be male or female, but I I witness uh, females. All right. Now the dude said it. They might have just said it verbally and didn't type it. Okay. Somebody said we don't need this type of attention here. You see what I'm saying? Now, that's where some people can use that term professionalism because we don't want our school to be a popularity contest. And that's how, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. The professional thing that you're going because yeah. no one really knows how to define professionalism. It's basically how we do things around here. Because professional, and the one thing about professional, the term is subjective to the environment. Exactly. Because professional and at a gaming company, you can come. In your pajamas right. and flip flops, and you're still professional. You're doing your job. Professional is defined by the environment in right. which you work. And so now that's that's one of the interesting things. Now, according to where she works, now this is where it gets interesting. Mm-hmm. According to where she works, um, the policies about dress code. All right. Okay. Now the good thing about it, everyone says, well, according to the dress code and APS or whatever county you in, it strictly says. And then they and, and it's, they say strictly says, and then the words they say after it be very general. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they say it strictly says general stuff. And so <laughs> they, they, they strictly say words that is still up to the interpretation of the people who make decisions. You see what I'm saying? See, form fitting. What is form fitting? You have to ask yourself because if your body has a form, you go out there and buy clothes that fit. All right. Now, I do understand tightness. Don't get me wrong. Oh, no, I, I no, no, I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, <laughs> it's one of the the because I t- I tend to buy uh, form fitting uh, attire. Yeah. Attire, right? You know, I so, tend not to. Yeah. Oh well, I would. I go crazy if if it's not form fitting. I understand. But but you you also run very fast. And so you, you can <laughs> no 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 Mike 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 Ball has he he has he's a speed demon. Uh, we were that always booking it. Oh man, he's. You teleporter. Like, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. But no, but I, I, I get what you're saying because that's your uh, ideal uh, way of dressing. And people have a judgment on that. Exactly. And and label exactly. me as, as something that I may not be or label me as and judge depending on what I'm wearing. Right. Even, even my own parents. Exactly. So, and family members. And you mentioned earlier about the previous generation who are wondering, uh, who call my pants Slim Jims. I don't know how they got Slim Jims. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and these are the baggy things I have, but um, call my pants Slim Jims mm-hmm. and uh, wondering why I'm not wearing a three-piece suit. Wow. To her, but uh, wow, because that's it's it's boiled down to acceptance, y'all. I mean, it's it's whoever is in power at that moment in that space that you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. who's in control of those spaces and who sets the tone for those spaces. Mm-hmm. That's what it really boils down to. So now I'm asking the question. All right, she's in that space now. The the photo. What happens is I think they were trolling her social media account and start looking at pictures and say, you know what, we don't like anyone modeling like this working at our school right 
But mm-hmm. it goes beyond the four walls of the school. It, it started following her in her personal life. Which made it unfair. Which is, yes. And so now, now that's, and, and you know what's funny? You know, we were talking about fairness, right? Mm-hmm. On the first show. When we look at fairness, I think that whole thing about setting people up when it comes to standards and policies, fairness is pretty much thrown out the window. Because yeah. if you, if it, regardless of what you feel, you do what I say because I pay you, the fairness just went out the door. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now, it also can apply to the evidence we were talking about. Exactly. We're going to get into that, too. But today's, today's show, honestly, and the reason why we started off talking about this is that isolation. She was isolated. Regardless mm-hmm. of what we want to agree with or not, she was highlighted at first in a very positive light at being aesthetically pleasing, being attractive, mm-hmm. all right? And then now it turned into her getting reprimanded, okay? And so now we have no idea how she feels about it. She has, um, I'm not going to say she deleted her accounts, but um, based off something I saw on social media that some things were taken down, all right? We don't know who told her to do it, because I'm pretty sure she probably had that talk like, hey, if you really want to, I'm not going to, allegedly, possibly, somebody might have said, you know, if you may want to do this if you want to keep your job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or you may want to do this if you don't want to blackball yourself from a career in teaching. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's a possibility. Go ahead. I mean, this points to, uh, you speak of isolation and uh, 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 Fanonian concepts in, in, in uh and uh, bold, uh, Baldwin's concepts of, uh, and they both say something different. Uh, one about the invisibility of the black body, mm-hmm. and one about the hyper. No, sorry, it's it's uh, it's uh, Fanon and uh, Ellison. Um, uh, Ellison, as you know, about the Invisible Man. Um, and say say uh, the first and last names of the authors, so just in case people want to look them up. Oh, Ralph Ellison. Ralph and, Ellison. Uh, yeah, and, okay. and and Franz Fanon. Franz Fanon yeah. and James Baldwin. Um, and, and James Baldwin doesn't really, he doesn't say the words, like in the way that Ellison or, or but he, uh, Ellison or Fanon, but he, he points, he alludes to a lot of this stuff. Right. To, and a lot of the black authors allude to a lot of these things, but mm-hmm. the, the, the hyper-visi- hyper-visibility of the black body and the invisibility of the black body, yeah. uh, how they are both. Uh, and that can be a very isolating uh, experience, a very lonely experience. Both of them are used. Uh, and I, I don't want to go uh, uh, too deep, but when we talk about isolation, we have to also talk about identity and the black experience mm-hmm. and how we are uh, isolated from our own selves and from our own psyches and parts of ourselves that we will never know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, and a history that we will never know. So we are isolated not only within the larger culture, but within our own minds, our own bodies. Uh, and so I think that also needs to be talked about uh, as well. I just want to insert that. I'll, I'll come in later we'll do we're we gonna really revisit that you ready to go to a break oh man i was just absorbed in oh no we finna get to it tonight Ooh. ladies and gentlemen and make sure that you uh um, make sure that you email us at zeta delta delta at gmail.com uh this is omega side five return incorporated's um uh initiative brother you're on my mind and what we're doing is talking about issues that could possibly affect our mental health today we're talking about isolation uh how to deal with it what people are actually going through we have some some feedback from people who are really feeling isolated in this in this world all right and it, it could be in surrounding counties it could be from all over the country you never know we're also going to be talking about evidence and proof um and and how it affects fear And we're going to be talking about how that actually builds up false evidence appearing real. So we thank you so much for tuning in. You might want to text and tweet. Tell people to listen to the show because you might get some really good help this evening, man. Dale, take us away. Listen, 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 man. We're going on a break. This is the Manhood Mindset on WVGS 91.9 The Buzz. Amazing. Welcome back, welcome back. This is the Manhood Mindset on WVGS 91.9, The Buzz. And we're back. It's a complete definition of natural. That was natural. (laughs) (laughs) Flows like the waters of Lake Minnetonka, man. (laughs) I don't even remember. I don't even know what that means. I just heard it in a movie. Yeah, what movie was that? I don't know. It's, no, they, I seen it in Dave Chappelle. Oh, that's was, what. That's yeah, what when it he was, was uh, doing uh, uh, when he was impersonating Prince. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Dave Chappelle, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a Manhood Mindset. Today's topic uh, is isolation, and then we're going to trans uh, transition into understanding evidence 
and proof and how that produces fear, mm -hmm. which is false mm -hmm. evidence appearing real. All right. Well, Gentlemen, I'll tell you like this here before you even get into that serious go ahead. I used to hate that part of football te season when they would isolate muscles and there would be evidence and proof that I was out of shape. That's and funny. It would create fear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Isolated muscle structure destructions. Okay, I got you. All right, I just wanted to say that. No, it, hey, no, it's it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Um, but isolation, gentlemen, this is what we're going to talk about right now. The reason why we're talking about this today is, first of all, like we said before, we're talking about things that affect the mindset of men, uh, particularly black men. However, we do understand that it may affect everyone. Okay, uh, <clears throat> isolation. Isolation could be defined as a as as a term that says um, a person that may be ostracized or kept away from a group, or who've been treated differently based off who they are, and and ha they have to witness everyone else treated a different way. Um, and we don't have a necessarily like the Webster's dictionary. We're gonna go off based off how we feel when we're isolated, when we feel that we are isolated, um, when you may be treated a certain way because of who you are uh when you are uh removed or included based off who you are because sometimes people don't understand there can be isolation and inclusion especially if people include you for the wrong reasons right you can be a celebrity and people flock to you but you can still feel by yourself because people only want you for what you represent or the or the spotlight that you may have, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So we're having a lot of people, uh, especially like a lot of students on campus, um, and, and saw a lot of people around the Bullitt County area. A lot of people feel isolated. Now I had a, a really good talk with a gentleman uh, a few days ago, <clears throat> and he's a father. He's a, he's a married man, um, a father of four kids, and he talked to me about really how he feels about some of the things that's been going on in society, how helpless he feels as a father and protecting his kids. Wow. All right. Now I asked him to elaborate on it. He said, well, the things that are going on and me as a, a black male, I really don't know what I can do, what I'm allowed to do to protect my own. And honestly, I feel helpless. I feel isolated and I feel by myself. And I really just do not know what to do. Um, and we talked about it for a while because I think the first, the first thing you got to do is when people feel by themselves, the quickest thing we do is tell the person, no, man, it's not like that. You're not by yourself. You know what I mean? That's that, that comp compensatory, I want to help you out. I see you in pain. I don't want to keep seeing you in pain like this, right? However, I just had to hear him out. You know, I just keep talking. Tell me why you're by yourself. Tell me why you're always thinking that you're the only one going through this. Now, the biggest misconception is when someone tells you that they feel by themselves, they're not telling you that they're the only one going through it on the face of the planet. They're the only one that's feeling the exact pain that they're feeling. You see what I'm saying? And one thing I had to do was make sure you respect each other's pain and respect everybody's situation of isolation because we really just don't know what it is. If they are feeling by themselves, we can't necessarily think we can relate so fast. If, if I'm making sense to y'all. Um, so I asked him, I said, man, just elaborate a little bit more. What are you talking about? He said, well, man, I just cannot be the father to Mir Rice. I really don't know how I would take it. I'll be devastated. And I can't be the father of Trayvon Martin. He said, I just can't do it. Um, he said, I look at that situation. I look at my children every day and I have to send them places and I have no idea if I can protect them wherever they're going. And the first thing you want to say is, man, everybody goes through that. You know what I mean? However, when it comes to him, his situation with his children, his, his life, it has to be respected. So honestly, man, I just, I listened to him. I didn't give him any answers or nothing like that, but I, huh? No, I, I didn't give him any answers or anything like that, but I really wanted him to understand that he was not crazy. That's the only thing I wanted to just make it's, sure it's I almost, told him. It's almost as if he's asking the question mm -hmm. instead of stating something and, uh, about isolation. It's almost as if he's asking the question, what am I going to do uh, uh, about this hopelessness and, and slight helplessness that I feel? Exactly. Um, and, and can you help me? 
mm-hmm. um, and uh, and uh, there there is uh, help in camaraderie. There's there's help in in family. I don't mean blood family, right? Um, but uh, I think many uh, many a black man, many a uh, many a brown body as well, ask this question. Um, and, and when I mean brown body, I mean those who really look ethnic, yeah. who are asking, "What am I going to do in this uh, uh, dangerous American landscape, uh, in this uh, desert of a place we call America?" Because there is a certain isolation and a certain loneliness that does come with being in the desert. Desert could be a good thing mm-hmm. for Je- for Jesus, mm-hmm. um, uh, it, but it also can be at, at night sometimes a lonely experience you know, and we are experiencing night in a sense mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, especially for the black or brown body oh, and, yeah. and existing in this dark what are we going to do in this deep loneliness and, and, and deep uh, dread that we feel that we have to hug at night that embraces us without us even choosing to uh, so so asking the black having the black body ask themselves uh, and ask other other black bodies what am I going to do with this feeling this inescapable feeling mm-hmm. um, that haunts my days and, and haunts my nights mm-hmm. uh, 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 and so I think that's something that needs to be addressed as well. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm-hmm. man, it makes perfect sense, man. I, I think <clears throat> one of the things I wanted to do, um, especially when you want to help people, you want to be honest. Sometimes <clears throat> you want to answer, you want to give mm-hmm. that answer, and sometimes I have to make sure I check the ego of being a helper mm-hmm. um, and say, well, that person may not need that answer right now. He might want some truth be from you you know what i'm saying because sometimes when we think we're trying to get an answer we're trying to give the correct one you know what i mean mm-hmm. and sometimes we're, we're trying to search for that correct answer to give someone <laughs> you were conjuring up something that sounds nice and they only right now they needed something real oh man it'll be all right yeah yeah and, and then that, and then the power man and 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 this is what we we really want to talk about and dale i want you to i want you to kind of i i guess think of a situation that we're, we're talking about and then during the break we were talking about it can be uh in america it can be within your family it can be within at your job it can be within your friends because some people this is what a lot of people don't understand now a lot of people who have grown up together are drifting apart okay a lot of people are dealing with that a lot of people you grew up with and uh, the way you're growing, people are growing apart. They may be growing in the same direction, but they're getting in different lanes now. And sometimes when you are in your own lane, you feel real isolated. You feel like no one's with you. You know uh, what I mean? And, 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 of course, isolation, as I pointed out, can be a, a, a wonderful thing at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 John needed that biblically mm-hmm. um, uh, to write and to reflect right um uh but uh i, I think there's uh, uh uh what do you think about oh she's mad about what do you think about uh, why people are getting in their own lanes and stuff like that that you speak of and honestly to my to my knowledge uh i can speak uh personally and i can speak on behalf of who uh have told me about their experiences some people life experiences have drifted them into their own lane you know what i mean Mm-hmm. Um, they may have been isolated and their friends may have thought they isolated themselves when in fact in actuality people are isolated that one person um, and you know some people you know when you're growing and, and, and you're doing different things some people may not understand what you're doing so what they do is they put their un- misunderstanding as you're trying to be selfish or you're not letting me end on it. Because sometimes your growth, you don't even understand it. You're just trying your best to. And you don't even know how to explain it to your friends. Mm-hmm. But the friends who are such on the outside looking in. Because honestly, no one knows what's in your spirit and in your mind all the time. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even know what's in there. So we're trying our best to really uh, just push through that, that gray area of I don't know what in the world is going on. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to work in this direction because I think this direction feels right. But I'm still not sure. Mm-hmm. But the way I'm going is is making people angry at me. Yeah, and, but and, I'm willing to make some folks angry, but it's not personal. Yeah, and that's and, and, that, that's and, isolation. And that, that's that's what you get from family members and friends are saying. Why are you not calling me? Why are you not doing this? Why are you doing right it? when it's not really about the other person all the time? Exactly. And the, the narcissism in our culture, by the way. Exactly. Uh, 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 but you are going through a certain journey, and and you feel like you're, you you feel yourself changing in some ways for the better, but you can't describe it, and you don't fully understand what is. You can't fully comprehend what's going on around you, but exactly. you know something's happening. Exactly, exactly. So, Dale, man, if you don't mind, 
tell us a time or some people that you might know who have really gone through that isolating experience. Honestly, I'm going through it right now. Okay. Um, being, a, first of all, African-American father who um, who's in school and also, you know, trying to take care of his family, I feel very isolated because uh, out of my group of friends, I'm the only one. Mm. That's really a father, period. Okay. And it's like, it's even all the way, like, um, all the way to all of my mentors. You know, my mentors that are close to me, even from high school, they're not fathers. Mm. I am. And it's like, okay, I don't really have anybody that I can go to and be like, hey, how did you deal with this? Or if I do find someone, yeah, they were fathers, but not in my situation. Right. So it's like, okay, well what do i do so that makes me feel isolated and then sometimes i find myself isolated you know just hey you know i want to go out and do this but i can't i got responsibilities now right and i feel isolated as a uh, in my relationship Mm -hmm. i feel isolated as a black man because i sometimes i can't do stuff or whatever for my child and the isolation comes into the fact that my significant other, she, I may not ever know how it is to be a black woman, mm. but she'll never understand how it is to be a black man. Okay. She'll say, why do you sit here and stress about certain things? Because when anything goes wrong with this family, including you, it's automatically my fault. Mm. Mm. And it's just like, oh, well, you know, sometimes I'll be like, hey, why well, I didn't get this praise or this recognition or something like that? Or, hey, I do this as well, whatever. And uh, she'll be like, well, why do you feel the need to have that? I said, because when everything goes wrong, it's all my fault. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether it was because you didn't do your part or something, some extremely, like some kind of circumstances came up to where something couldn't happen. It's always my fault. Think about this. You go into a daycare, a class or whatever, and a child is not prepared or does not have something that they need, what is the first thing they say? Well, what is a daddy doing? Or what is, a, what is, what is his daddy doing? Is his daddy in his life? That's the first thing. Mm-hmm. What really blows the provider. my mind. Yeah, the provider. What really blows my mind and isolates me is the look of surprises on people's face every morning when I drop my son off at daycare. Mm-hmm. Like, you're still here? <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, this is my son. Like, are you serious? So that makes me feel isolated as in like, I'm always at war. Mm. Like, okay, my girl waiting on me to mess up. We're dealing with issues with that, trying to balance um, being um, a man as far as for her, a man for myself, a man for my son, and being a family man at the same time. Mm -hmm. All the while being being a student, being the best that I can be in my fraternity and my bond is like, no one else that I know is going through all of the same things right now. Right. So I feel isolated. And I can sit here and I can talk to people, but at the end of the day, all they can say is, you beasting it. Yeah, but I'm dying inside. Yeah. So yeah. it just and makes me feel... How much of the... Hmm? How much of... Uh, I'm not sure. I, even I have an answer for this question, but how much of this is, is uh, pressure from the... Um, we live in a Eurocentric you know, society mm-hmm. who defines what manhood is. And we uh, uh, we may adopt uh, some ideas and and pressure or feel certain pressures exactly because um, as slaves we may get our idea of what manhood is from massa. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, and, and but at the same time you look at certain uh, Native American tribes, uh, Native American cultures, uh, what the what the man does and what the woman does is is is, is different. Uh, <laughs> could be could be similar. Could also be different mm-hmm. um, from from the things that 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 we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, 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 check out a guy by the name of uh, Russell Means. He talks about the relationships in his particular uh, tribe between man and woman. Spell that last name. Uh, uh, Russell uh, Means. M e a n s. Y'all look up Russell Means. And uh, what what's the title or what does he say? Um, he he talks about uh, he 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 wrote something about where where, where white men fear to tread. He has a uh, uh, also a couple of YouTube uh, videos. He's a, he was an activist okay. and uh, and stuff. So uh, I, you know check him out. But anyway, like I said, it could be and, and Eurocentric uh, people aren't the only people that were patriarchal. Mm. You know, you, mm-hmm. you guys know this. Right. Um, I I do believe, and I don't know if that they Eurocentric. Uh, uh, 
culture takes it to the next level mm-hmm. uh, w- with uh, with an imperialistic mindset of conquering. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I'm a man, I must conquer. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but but some of these uh, ideas, uh, uh, y- you ever hear you ever hear a, 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 a black woman uh, say, "You will be a man." Right. Be a man. Why don't you be a man? Right. Now, how is she defining manhood? Is she is she holding is she holding uh, a Eurocentric model up to you and saying you need to follow that? And then you believe that at mm-hmm. the same time, um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, because I, I, uh, we get in trouble when we get uh, when we are expected to provide, 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 and not love. Right. Um, but we feel pressure to provide in a culture that we get left behind easily if we don't have enough money. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think you guys remember the great comedian. I don't like using comedians because it's, because, it's because that goes into fallacy. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very it's very hard. Uh, 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 that talked about. Uh, I think it was Chris Rock. Once again, I don't like good comedians and use them as examples because you should never use them as support because once again, it's fallacy mm-hmm. um, territory. Um, but the bank won't even talk to you without having. <laughs> you know, uh, remember they talked about going to the teller and it, you know you can't withdraw like five dollars and eighty three cents. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the yeah, bank won't too. even talk to you without you having a significant amount of money. <laughs> you know, Ooh, you are treated differently. And, and so in a culture in a consumerism culture and there and, and we get caught up in that not because we want to but in part because we have to in order just to survive right. on a daily basis and a lot of uh, uh, black culture is caught in survival mode not because they want to right and the people who don't define Does that make sense? Them, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the people who don't define themselves by how much money they make they are isolated by the overall belief system that your manhood is based off your money mm-hmm. or your account. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Dale, I wanted to ask you this. Man. Oh, also, sorry. Go ahead. And w- one more thing, Dale. Uh, I like how you say, you feel isolated because you can't do certain things. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was that was great because I just wonder. I don't know if you guys ever wonder this. Am I loud enough? Um, yeah. I, I just wonder uh, what happens uh, because they held Adam responsible, too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, I just wonder when you're sitting home at night, you know. And, and you are by yourself, the kids are asleep, and you are sitting up and you are wondering mm-hmm. how you're going to connect the dots. And there's many black women I know that sit up at, at night as well, but how are you, know, you taking on that responsibility, which I admire? Right. Um, uh, uh, sitting up at night, you know, who is there in your corner to comfort you, or are you just sitting alone in the dark? I wonder. And that can be a very isolating experience uh, because who are, you, who are you being fed by? Right. I wonder. I'm really not. Okay. So, and I'm sorry. I, and about, no, I'm sorry. No, that's good. Oh, really. But it's just like no. That's that's where I, I end up most of the time sitting. At, and the thing about it is, if anybody else like on the outside looking in, they'll be like, "Oh my God, man!" Like you go into school, you ain't flunked out. You're taking care of your kids. You're still involved. Oh my God, you're you're just you're beasting it. But at the same time, I'm sacrificing so much of myself, so much of what I want to do. Sometimes I sit at home, and, and I and I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying this to to paint the woman that I'm with in no, no, no. in a negative light. But sometimes I sit there, and I don't even voice voice my wants or my needs because I'm already feeling like I'm at war. So the last thing I need is one the, one more conflict. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm I'm even you know I'm even more isolated because it's just like even though I may feel like well hey. I'm doing what I need to do as a man. This is these are the things that I need. Like needs are everybody. I'm taking care of my responsibilities as a man. I was raised as a man. If you fulfill everyone's cup in the house, mm-hmm. somebody should pour you a little juice back. Okay. That's and the thing about it. That's uh, what I'm. That's probably oversimplifying mm-hmm. it. But what I'm saying is, my mother taught me if you take care of your family as a man. Your family will take care of you. Right. I mean, and it's not necessarily financially, but mm-hmm. spiritually, mm-hmm. mentally, your family will pour back into that cup. Mm-hmm. But I'm at a point where my son fills my cup up. Because sometimes when I'm feeling low or feeling depressed, I'll sit there and play with him. And he'll just look at me and he'll and he'll look at my eyebrow like it's comes from the heavens and <laughs> smiles like like oh my god it's hairy and it moves like it's just <laughs> he just he just he just looks at it like it's the best thing in the world and i'm just like wow i'm literally your whole world mm-hmm. as your father or whatever and that bring that gives me the energy to keep going but that's that's how but the thing about it is there's ways that i look for in my companion where i'm just like 
this is what I need from you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like I can't express it because if I express it, see, there's an issue that black men have. We're 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 accused of not communicating, but when we communicate, we're punished. That is mm -hmm. that hey. So it's, it gets you to the point where you're like, well, I'm not going to say anything. Mm -hmm. If you don't say anything, then you're harboring your feelings and you're no longer being effective mm -hmm. to yourself or to her. So it puts you in a lose-lose situation. Or you request something, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You request something and either it will not get done, which makes you feel insignificant, or it'll get done and it'll get done with an attitude, which makes you be like, well, don't even worry about it. I can't enjoy Mm -hmm. you know getting my cup filled and I'm not saying that's with every woman and I'm not saying that's specifically my situation but sometimes I fear that mm -hmm. yeah. and I feel isolated because I'm just like hey she got these pressures on her as well mm -hmm. so I feel like there's certain stuff I can't say and put on her as well right, right. so what was the question you were trying to get me to that you were coming no that was that was it that was, I was it was basically the things that you've seen mm -hmm. and personally experienced what are you doing to cope and see the coping mechanism sometimes is like and i've done this from time to time it's like i don't have energy to fight right now you know what i mean mm -hmm. like if i can't help the battle sometimes the only way you win your current battle is not to get in another one exactly it, but it isolates you because you feel like it, you have no power it does how and this is this is the funny thing sometimes when you want people to understand what you're going through I realize now that sometimes, man, that is that relationship between you and your creator. <laughs> like, I, th I think yeah. that's where it just boils down to from time to time. I don't, I don't think that people will be just all the way disconnected from what you're doing. But there's such thing as empathy and everything. Some people at least try to empathize with you and try to connect with you. Like, yeah, I've been through something similar to this and other. But, man, your spirit and your soul and your mind, that is... Somebody made that and somebody knows exactly what you're going through that no one else will. And that isolation, I'm not going to lie to you, that in that aspect, isolation can be extremely positive. When you know the most powerful being in existence is the only one that understands. You know what I'm saying? But I know that disconnect from humans, mm. you know, because that's the people we can see. And that's that, that's that, that's that balance, man. Like cause sometimes the same thing that depresses you. This is some of the, it, when you switch your perception on it, as soon as you make a choice to look at it in a different way, it can give you all the power you needed to, you know, break through whatever was going on. So say for instance, it's all the human beings around you, close people, have no idea what to say to you to help you, right? Mm -hmm. But we love you. We'll be like, hey man, I really don't, like sometimes when we talk, I'll be like, man, I have no answer. Yeah, yeah no answer. Like, however, I just know when we talk, I say, you just don't need no lie. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I said, just don't give him something else to, for him to try to figure out. You just don't be an extra barrier. That's yeah. the, that's sometimes that's my only response. But sometimes, man, when you get into that house by yourself and you know that, man, I feel by myself. But for some strange reason, I know I'm not. You see what I'm saying? It, I don't feel that. Well, no, I'm, I'm talking about, honest. No, I'm, yeah. talking about, I'm talking about me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about me. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes I sit there and I'm like, man, I am... No one else is going through this right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. However, man, the way I dig myself out of that situation is, all right, I do understand that no one can know exactly what I'm feeling. No one can know exactly what I'm thinking because mm -hmm. I will have to put that out in the world. No one knows exactly what's going on in my brain. I will have to share it for people to really even get an idea of what's mm -hmm. going on. So honestly, some of the stuff that I don't share that is an isolation, but some of that stuff, man, is for me to is for me to understand and try to get myself through it. Okay, that's just me, though. Well, this is what I want to do because I approach stuff that made me feel isolated. Right. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna bring attention to everything that makes me feel strong in my isolation. Cool. Go ahead. All right. The first thing is, my lady came down here by herself mm -hmm. and transferred. In order to go to a different school to be down here for our family right. to be together. Right. Yeah, that makes me feel isolated sometimes, but it gives me the strength that she had the confidence in me to lead. Okay. And that she was secure enough to trust me being isolated from her people. And that's real. So, and that makes me feel like, okay, 
All right, she Somebody may not be able. Back. She may not be able to connect to me, and sometimes her actions do make me feel isolated. But at the same time, she's isolated herself in order to give me some kind of togetherness. Right, right. All right, I'm just pointing out the power. But that's the power of perception, though. That's, yeah, that's, the that's, power that's of how perception. you switched it on. That's yeah. how I switched it. Yeah, and and of course, I got to do this for the ladies because I know there's some ladies out there saying, "Well, dang." <laughs> you know, like, anytime that. when a dude talks about what's going on with him, they always gonna do that. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> you gotta approach both, both sides. What about the ladies? It's a man show. What about the women? <laughs> <laughs> but but then the thing about it is, you'd be like, if they be like, this show is for women. Well, what about the men? This show is for women. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> but anyway, it's completely different. Move, peasant. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> but at the, and then also at the same time, I'm like. Wow, I'm getting ready to finish my last year of school. Wow, I I accomplished becoming an Omega Man. Okay, also, this is my greatest accomplishment. My son is healthy, happy, and overjoyed to see me, knows who I am, and has an effective relationship to where he tells me what's wrong, where his mom got to figure it out. Hmm. So it's like, it validates me as in like, hey, if I wasn't here... A whole person, a whole being of life would miss me. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives me that, all right, cool. Okay, I could deal with this again another day. Yeah. All right, bet. I'm stressed yeah. out, but I'm good. Yeah. And that's, that's what flips everything around. Honestly, I don't think if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have the strength to do what I do every day. Right. And I think that isolation feeling is not to be destroyed, man. I, th I think it's to be looked at i need to ease up though yeah well trust me. well i think i think the stress and the fear that's associated with isolation yeah. and that's what we're talking about today that fear that's associated with that isolation like when you're by yourself what are you scared of i think i i had to start asking myself that sometimes when i'm by myself no one's there or i think i'm the only person dealing with it what am i really scared of you know, and sometimes my, my brain doesn't start thinking, uh, am I thinking people going to leave me? Uh, or mm -hmm. I think people going to turn on me? What am, what am I really thinking? And so if, when you start facing your fear, because the evidence, it, we talked about evidence and uh, we, we talked about evidence and, and, and proof the other day. Evidence and proof is two totally different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And fear is false evidence of being real. You can have some evidence planted on you. Somebody can uh, make up a statistic about you and call that evidence, mm -hmm. but it can be false, but it can, you can be scared of it having real effects on you. Let me give you an example. Um, say, for instance, if you come out, uh, Mike, if somebody came out with a statistic, one out of every four black males will die before the age of 18. Okay. Now, that is a statistic, right? We have no idea where that statistic comes from. We have no idea who wrote it. We just know it's constantly being pushed. I that's just is my example because I remember growing up, I saw that statistic over and over. I'm in the middle of watching cartoons. Another statistic: one out of five black men will do this, or you got an achievement gap. You know, uh, one out of five will drop out of high school. So it was something about black men that statistic and what people call evidence that I saw on a daily basis. Right, that evidence appeared real to me. And what got in my entire life, well, especially when I was a kid, and, you know, I'm still trying to figure out my ways through this now, is that false evidence made me fear actually becoming that statistic that probably wasn't even true. It, you know, and, and these feelings of uh, isolation are, 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 are possibly rooted in our damage that was done to our psyches, you know, from, really from, from these statistics and things of that nature mm -hmm. and, and false media reports. Um, uh, but we were one out of five black men, but nobody asked us to fill out that evaluation form. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm getting. It's the evidence that people can use that evidence against me without even including me in the evaluation. Mm -hmm. That that right there, it messes with your mind and it makes you feel by yourself. Because guess what? That one out of five black men, every well, and I ain't gonna speak for everybody. I would say internally, I identify with that one. And I started living trying not to be that one out of five. And that a lot of people that I grew we, up with. We start running from an early age. Exactly. And, we don't want to be that one. And, so and, and we find ourselves uh, often alone and, and distant from because we, we ran away. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Or you, you worked 
ten times as hard trying not to be that one, but you end up True, killing yeah. yourself. Yeah. You, end up, you ended up isolating yourself because that statistic isolated you. So it was like double isolation. It was like you've already said one out of five. And you ever, you ever went to uh, like a college program and they say, oh, a high school program or any other program, they say, look to your left, look to your right. One of those people won't be here with you. And see, but what, what will make a person, don't get me wrong. Even five if, of you in this room will die. That's what it was. <laughs> I mean, I've been in, I've been in situations, man, where we've, I, I remember in, in growing up, we used to have these speakers come to these schools, man. And they will, I would call them the bad decision speakers. The people who made really horrible decisions and, and they were paid to come scare you. Right. And so they were like, you know what? Some of y'all going to die. And I'm like, who wrote your check? I, I'm like, I need to know. Someone in the back. And is, um, Two y'all going to die. Somebody approved it. <laughs> like somebody approved this guy to come and tell us we going to die. Like, you know what I mean? And so what you do is like, see, what don't nobody understand is regardless of what he says, no one can control the impact and how those kids take it. You have no idea what kind of reinforcement they may see at the house that they're going to blame themselves for. Mm. And then not only that, if you hear it in the news, you hear it at the school, and then when you go home, you hear another statistic by a parent that's trying to give you tough love. You will base your life out of that one out of five. And that's not true for everybody, but it's true for the people that it affected them in that way. And sometimes you can live your life based off of fear, the false evidence that appeared real at that time. People have statistics about black men all the time, man. And I ain't going to lie to you. Me just watching TV sometimes, I'm like, who is looking at us so close? <laughs> you know, I, I used to just ask myself. You, I mean, we have statistics about a lot of things. But when it comes to black males and black people, I've seen the most statistics out of and I don't, And I can't say that it don't exist because, I mean, of course, you have to do your research to see how many statistics are out there. But I know the statistics that have been exposed to me on a great scale have been about people that look like me. And I'm wondering what that is. Is it evidence or is it proof? Mm. And sometimes right. some people could just have write something down and say, hey, this is just evidence that achievement gap. Well, you know, you guys test lower on SAT scores. You know, you just do. Which, no. is, which is really, as you know, a resource gap and an opportunity gap. Right. And so, but they can use it as evidence. But what is that proving? No one wants to talk about what is it proving. They're just going to use the uh, evidence. A, a narrative that they are trying to perpetuate. Mm -hmm. It's proof for a narrative. Exactly. And uh, so. But it depends on what story you are trying to tell. Exactly. And that's where that fear comes from. See, fear, the isolation, that evidence, all the things that are being used especially when it comes to men we don't really understand how many barriers we're actually facing sometimes we can um we can um really just believe that hey man just pull you you know everybody had that bootstrap conversation just pull yourself up a bootstrap life ain't fair just do it yeah mm -hmm. yeah life may not be fair but life is harder for some <laughs> let's just say that life is not fair but life is specific a specific treatment is for certain people I've, i'm a living witness to it you know what i'm saying yeah, I had a question because you explained the lower test scores comment that he made. Mm -hmm. Can you explain, um, Mr. Shaw, could you explain ball, ball, ball? Yeah. ball. No, I can't explain it. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> ball. Mr. Ball, could you explain why is it that, because I've, I've noticed this as a young father. They say we don't want to be fathers. They say we will not be fathers. We will not be there for our kids. We're less likely to be fathers. But every time I look around... And I and I look at myself and I feel special for what I'm doing. I'm like, he's doing it. He's doing it. It's a lot of black fathers out here, so but they say we not they, they, here they, they, There are more. Uh, 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 I believe the statistics show, still show that, but there are more. You know, two parent households, and you know, than than one parent uh, uh, households. For mm -hmm. the they, they'll make you believe uh, uh, that uh, for the specifically for for the black community, there's only there's only single fathers or single mothers, mm -hmm. mainly single mothers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, but statistics show. That uh, uh, 
that there are more two parent houses now it's going to get tricky because yes they say there's two parents but um uh, that black male within that home he may be physically there but emotionally intellectually not present um because maybe mm. he, he may feel isolated so that sisters don't show that uh he may feel isolated or marginalized within his own family um mm -hmm. for several reasons not only from ex external pressures but from internal pressures and those internal pressures will kill your family um uh, uh, uh sometimes more so than external um but why why do I think that the, they tell us because they don't want us uh, it's it's uh, uh, want us reproducing for whatever reason this like they, they don't want uh, um, uh, uh, Muslim families reproducing to take over America somehow <laughs> um, and uh, which is very difficult to do because there are several forms of naturalization acts throughout history mm -hmm. and there's different forms of naturalization acts right now that are unofficial mm -hmm. that keep uh, uh, black and brown bodies from from expanding in, in the ways that, that I think that they should um, but this is uh, they tell you because maybe it is possible on the, on the most basic level they don't want you to but also they don't want to believe that you can and they don't want you to believe that you can um, because because uh, uh, that what may produce a, a nightmare within their so-called American dream Hmm. Wow. Can you can you elaborate on the term? I know a lot of people um, when you say black and brown bodies. Yes. I'm not going to lie to you. When you every time you say black and brown bodies, it it does something to my mindset. Right. And it's different from saying black and brown people, mm -hmm. black and brown bodies. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on what that that term or the phrase means and what what does it is there a difference between um, black people and just black bodies because when you talk about ba black bodies I kind of but uh, yeah. but uh, when I'm talking about black and brown bodies I am talking about uh, let's say black I'm talking about the collective black African American Jamaican Haitian mm -hmm. and uh, yes uh, those you in South America who have forgotten um, who call uh, Portugal and uh, and uh, Spain mother and father instead of Ghana and Nigeria mm. um, uh, but mm. uh I am also talking about brown bodies. There's a, a you know here in states where there's a there's a pretty nice size migrant community mm -hmm. who, who are marginalized, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, for some reason or other aren't allowed to assimilate within the culture. Mm. Um, and and I don't I think assimilation. People talk about melting pot, and as Derek Jensen talks about, uh, who who does the melting? It's never it's never. Uh, it's never uh, uh, white bodies. It's non-white bodies doing the melting. Exactly. Um, uh, so. Uh, uh, when we talk about black and brown bodies, I'm sp when I say brown bodies, I'm specifically talking about those who really look ethnic, who can't pass as anything else. Right. Um, everyone would like to claim brown body, but not everyone is a brown body. Right. Um, right. Uh, so uh, just uh, I just hope I clarified that a little bit for no, you. No, no. And, uh, and and I think I think about bodies when I say about bodies, I I really try to also evoke uh, the images of, of 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 death and bloodshed because right. uh, the, the, I'm not talking about bodies laying in the street. I'm I'm talking about the bodies that they bury that the people that die in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about oh, yeah. um, a Native American uh, trail of tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is really a trail of blood mm -hmm. uh, and the trail of blood that's continuing uh, uh, in, in black and uh, black communities right um, and, and and the brown communities abroad right I think well the reason why I ask is because it is powerful for me to distinguish um, what you mean you know what I mean it wasn't like it was incorrect. No, I didn't, you, know, you, know, you know but some people may some people may if they've never heard of it they're like black brown bodies what does it mean I, I what I'm gonna tell you what I get from it. What it forces me to realize is that the bodies of black and brown people are moved around like chess pieces when it comes to certain environments on on this planet. Um, and just I mean, if you really look at and, and there's nothing wrong with, of course, with chess pieces uh, uh, moving. It, it just determines your your role on the on the board. The pawns True. must sacrifice their lives for the king True. and the queen True. and the True. bishops. Uh, mm. uh, preaching a certain religion uh, mm. uh, that uh, that continues to marginalize uh, and, and preach uh, uh, American, li you know, liberalism, you know, that old picking up your individualism, which picking yourself up by your bootstraps. And, right. Uh, but as Martin Luther King said, the Negro has no shoes. Right. 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 So, it, I mean, it, it honestly forces me to understand the dehumanization piece of this whole thing we're talking about, because sometimes we are just a body. In a, in a situation to other people who have power. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and, I mean? and we are we are a body. We are just a body. Yes, right. I think you're right. Now, right. Uh, we in, in some cases we are just a body that is written upon. Right. What is written upon that? Uh, a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things. A lot of things. So we're actually going to take a like a quick break, and then we're gonna we're gonna uh, finish with how are we going to take this isolation that makes us fearful, and how we're going to start overcoming the fear in our lives. All right, that sound cool to everybody. No, oh, yeah. All right, man. Dale, take us out, man. Well, All right. I got to have it soon, though. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Very another little segment of Manhood Mindset on WVGS 91.9 The Buzz. Welcome back to Manhood Mindset on WVGS 91.9 The Buzz. And man, we're gonna get right back into it, man. That's all right. They ain't gonna keep saying it. They just, we're gonna have to start charging people for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna do it. Like, did you hear it? Okay, uh, GoFundMe Dale from Riverdale dot com. All right. Um, <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about isolation today. Uh, we talked about uh, <clears throat> that uh, that alone feeling. It could be physical, emotional, academic. And I uh, honestly one of the most critical in my book is spiritual isolation. Oh my god. Um sometimes man you really just don't even know if you're being heard, especially sometimes when you're praying. <laughs> I'm just I'm just put that out there. I'm not saying that God don't work, man, but it's going to be some it has been some days that people think that their prayers are not answered. And sometimes when your last resort, the only weapon you got left is prayer. And you can still send it up and you still don't see any results. That's the I think that's the most painful isolation that spiritual isolation you know what i mean mm-hmm. now we i mean to me now as a as a as an adult and i've, I've grown a little bit uh i try to grow on a, a daily basis i know i'm never alone that's just me that's my personal opinion mm-hmm. uh whether i get the the answers that i want or the attention that i want or the quote-unquote help that i, I requested uh to me god ain't no genie so i already i kind of mm-hmm. know with our relationship and everybody's relationship with whoever they think their creator is or or who they don't think their creator is, that's totally up to them. I'm just talking about me. Um, our relationship is very, um, Chris, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's not one of those things where he hasn't fulfilled his half. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where I might not have understood what his 50% looked like. And I guess I was still waiting. And then it got to the point where sometimes that – quiet answer or that lack of an answer was me not understanding the answer he gave a long time ago or you know are you uh deep down understanding his answer but manipulating it right. to soothe your own ears yeah. kind of you know ahead of my own life i've kind of uh, uh messed up uh uh where I guess I'm supposed to be in a sense, if that makes any sense, um, uh, because I've kind of like transformed his words and ideas into my own name because it makes me feel good. Right, right. Or blaming him for your own decisions. Oh, I know people that do. I, I and honestly, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, you would think it was and then you find out it was you. Then you find out it wasn't, and then you find out it was you again. Because sometimes it just it takes that that discipline with that that listening, man. Like um, just understanding distractions and not trying to believe the false things. Um, it's a difference between what you've been told about your creator and what you know about your creator. I think and a lot of people need to at least visit that. I know I did. It helps me out a little bit. And. Um just to jump a little bit, but still similar, but it's not the same thing you're talking about. The isolation that that uh, uh, Jesus needs in the desert to hear, mm. uh, hear more clearly, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and uh, I just also made me think of that. Right. Um, there's isolation with you know in your prayer, yes, as you were talk- mm-hmm. talking talking, um, because a lot of times we do want things most wicked speed, um, and uh, uh, but also the isolation. Uh, uh, 
that that is necessary for our growth mm -hmm. and there's also when you think of isolation you also thought that so when you when you compound isolation from like a spiritual sense and then isolation in your own little world that you're in that we're living in on a daily basis like uh um, sometimes I, I might feel isolation from uh my uh desire to not assimilate into the culture that which i'm surrounded by um, so we have all these things together, just uh, this compounding, uh, it creates a snowball effect, mm -hmm. uh, and it's problematic in our lives, but hopefully that made sense. We talked about over the break, how do you handle isolation when you're isolated in a, in a supposed to be inclusive environment? You ever notice, or have you ever been in a situation where you're in a spot where this was your group, this was your, let's... I mean, let's not dress it up. You may feel isolated from your own race from time to time. You know what I mean? Uh, your own family from time to time, the people that's related to you, or your group of friends, like we mentioned earlier in the show, the people you grew up with, or the people you hang out the most with, the people who know the most about you. When that isolation hits, the people that is, that's your support system, when your support system isolates you, how do you handle it? And you could be isolated because you've outgrown them. <laughs> Huge or maybe. So, uh, how do you handle it? Um, I, I, you know, it depends on the person, obviously. But I, I truly believe in in spring cleaning. You might not have, might not have. It's, it might not be necessary for you to be in my future plans anyway. Uh, so I try not to fight those things. Like, you're going to tell me you love me. You're going to stick with me even though it's an abusive relationship or it's a non-productive relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're going to tell me because I hate being alone uh, for that period of, of time. But uh, I handle it. Uh, I've learned as I've grown up uh, uh, not to handle it as, as if my happiness depends on you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and we do need others in our lives. Yes, I think that's uh, beneficial. Uh, but I've handled it. The older grown grown I just yeah in stride uh, uh, it was necessary uh, thanks for for riding with me uh, these few miles and uh, uh, I will continue and, though a person said once I'm in an analogy that kind of made me chuckle but I started thinking about it after a while they were like you ever saw the loose strings on the bottom of your pants and I was like yeah I've seen those before yeah bottom of your jeans you know how sometimes they get frayed at the mm -hmm. bottom and stuff he said those little strings, sometimes those are your friends still trying to hold on. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> those are your friends. He said, sometimes they're not even contributing to the pants you have to put on every day. He said, they're just there, dragging them. <laughs> and he said, sometimes, man, you will achieve what you're trying to achieve when you start cutting the loose strings off. You know what I'm saying? You won't be walking on your pants anymore if you just cut those strings off. Now, I still don't get all what he meant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I got the mental picture of what he's trying to say. Some of those loose strings, they're not there. Just they're just there to be the part of the fabric, but they don't make what's going on. You know Sometimes what I mean? Loose strings, kind of like digging a little bit deeper into what he was saying. Have mm -hmm. you? If you see, I've seen them before, especially with kids. Right. If those pants fray too much and those strings get too long, you trip and fall on exactly. your face. Exactly. 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 So and, and, and that can ruin the, you know, you could end up ruining the whole pant. Exactly. So when you start seeing strings, you might want to get them scissors out. Yeah. And, or you're going to lose your pants. That, I don't know how that analogy worked. <laughs> but for some strange reason, I know exactly what we're talking about and I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> like, at the same time, man. So, but I, I, was, I would say, man, I, I would think that what we talked about today is, it, I mean, I hope it was helpful. I think some people are listening to it. I know we talked a lot about the young lady at Atlanta uh, Public Schools mm -hmm. about her dress and mm -hmm. how she was isolated about, you That's know, right. her her brown and black body, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. as you were talking about earlier, and how she was held accountable I for... I was quarantined. Right. It, it, she was held accountable for how other people feel about her. She's held accountable for it. So... Um, that isolation is real. Uh, I mean, my, my prayers and my support goes out to the sister. Um, I hope she, I hope she bounces back, and I hope she didn't even, I hope she didn't even fall. Because sometimes we just don't know. I haven't heard, which I haven't heard anything from her, so I'm not going to assume the worst has happened. You know what I mean? Reprimand means someone judged you and told you you can't do something. But you have no idea. She probably, somebody probably hated her into another lucrative career. It's nope. called it's called self esteem. Yeah, <laughs> it's esteem of your yeah. It's esteem of your 
self. <laughs> how can I mess up how I feel about you, simple? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So great impression. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So shout out to her, man. But anybody out there that's actually um, living with that isolated feeling, especially the spiritual one. I know we talked about it briefly uh, about that spiritual isolation where you feel like you're the only person going through it. Uh, one thing that uh, kind of helps me out that I had a really good conversation with a friend of mine. Uh, he told me that uh, your DNA, if you really look at your strand of DNA, um, your DNA is pretty much a code, right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's coded with all type of information of who you are as a person, right? And whoever created you spent time making a specific language that had your entire essence in it, right? And some of the things that affect you that your DNA is based off of, no one is able to understand what is going on because that is a conversation between you and who made you. And I was like, that's pretty deep, and, but that's kind of weird. And, 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 and your significant <laughs> other can come close. Of course, they'll never fill that com gap completely. Gap, yeah. But your significant other is the one who, if you find that, that great uh, person uh, uh, who can speak that silent language where you can be in the room and you fully understand, even though you two aren't saying anything, right. and knows your rhythms yeah. and tendencies and can speak, you know, your your bodily rhythms, can, can dance with you uh, on this, uh, I guess, dance floor of life in a sense, but uh, mm. uh, who can dance with you. You in a sense, so exactly. I think it's positive. I'm trying to salsa, I ain't talking chips. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. And there's some guy. You I think today we hopefully we help someone. Uh, I know I've definitely been helped. It, it's, it, it means a lot just hearing us talk about this type of information. Um, but we're going to be talking about this some more because honestly, we haven't talked about how people feel isolated being in a new city. Um, physically, uh, uh, being at a new job by themselves, they may be the only person who uh, of their cultural background or their racial background at their job. And honestly, the cultural uh, climate in this country, they are just trying to bear with it, but they don't think anybody understands, so they just shut down and isolate themselves in their office or outside or if they work outside or something like that out of safety. Um, a lot of times people just, just uh, are trying their best to cope with what's going on. Uh, your mindset is your responsibility. We're going to try to help people go through that. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, just find a way to acknowledge the things that give you life. I'm not going to tell you that's going to solve your problems, but that will help. The things that give you life, pay attention to those. Uh, it's a lot of things that uh, a lot of people do. Um, we pay attention to the things that distract us, and our distractions, our distractions have no intent on feeding us. Mm. Um, what I would highly suggest is you, you water the plants instead of the concrete. What do I mean? Uh, the concrete is, is hard. It's, it's cold. It's sturdy. It doesn't move. It's, it's not... It's not it doesn't allow that much growth, and if it does, you have to really grow for, <laughs> I don't know how many years, for some plants to go through some concrete. You know That's what right. I mean? You have to fight really hard. And then you see the plants on the side of the concrete who just grows because they're in a natural environment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what I would highly suggest, people, man, find the plants in your life, the people that give you oxygen, the people that give you food, spiritual food, physical food. There's people out there that will feed you physically. Keep those people in your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the people uh, that... Except for... And, and by the way, <laughs> don't believe the lie that if you don't eat uh, 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 collard greens and, and, and cornbread that you are <laughs> not black. Uh, and you, you just go over there because they're food. I mean, you can love the heart-clogging stuff if you want. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I, I don't... I don't um... <laughs> Like, yeah, we, no, plug that for someone specific. Exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> but <here>. but <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, you have a choice to water the plants or the concrete. If you water the concrete, you are responsible for the fruit not bearing. Mm. That's just totally. I mean, I, that's the truth for me. Uh, anytime when you feel like you're going through some rough stuff, you need to find the people that's giving you life. You need to find the people that's giving you that spiritual food, that academic food, that that entrepreneurial food. That you need people who are feeding you. Now, your situation, I have no idea how you're going to do it. You need to research or talk to people who've gone through similar situations 
and do it the best you can. But if you stay in toxic situations, I know this for a fact. If there are some things that is just you just stay in toxic things waiting for the fruit to bear, you will starve. If you're not careful, I'm not gonna. Well, I'm not gonna I'm give you. This, I'm, yeah, I'm not, yeah, them branches. Yeah, we talked about that. Read John, what was that? John 15. I think so. Yes, man. John 15. Get down, man. You so I become a branch. I'm right. not gonna lie to you. I've been poor. I've been, I've been, you know, as far as cultivating and stuff like that. I've been pouring straight milk of magnesia into into the ground, <laughs> trying to get some cereal. Talking about oops, all berries. <laughs> So my, I'm trying to water something to get some bears. Try it. I get Try it. it. I get it, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of our show, man. This is Zany Zoo Radio, man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. This is Manhood Mindset. Make sure you go to Ustream. We will have a uh, recording of this show. We're going to put it up on YouTube. Uh, you need to go to Zeta Delta Delta at gmail.com. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, gmail.com. Email, de- email us directly about... What you think about the show and what you want us to talk about and all that good stuff, man. Big Dale, you got any announcements or anything? Um, no. Comedy show next Wednesday. Yeah, comedy show. Yeah, yes. comedy show next yeah. Wednesday, 8.30, Main Street Billiards downtown. Go down there and holler at Everett. Uh, just speak and just just have a good time, man. Uh, we're going to be making you laugh on a Wednesday. Hump day. Yeah. Let's get it. All right? So Yeah, boy. Exactly, man. So we'll see y'all, man. Thank y'all so much for everything. Big Dale, what you got? All right, all right, all right. This was another episode of Manhood Mindset on WVGS, your station, 91.9, The Buzz. That's electric. Root to the Buzz. All right.